Welcome to Bible Logos. My name is Laura Worcester, and I'm your broadcast host. Today, I cannot wait to present to you part three of the message entitled, Your Five Heartbeats. Remember to like it and share it on social media with your friends and family. All right, get ready for part three of Your Five Heartbeats. Well, what's the third ministry in the administration gift? The third one, the uh, ministry of the evangelist. The ministry of the evangelist. These are the ones who are called to preach salvation to the law. They're the ones who thus saith the Lord, and their ministry is to win souls. Their ministry, their function, their operation, their calling is to get folks saved. They're not concerned about getting folks to grow the folks. They turn that over to the past. Their responsibility is to lead them to Christ. Then what about the next one? The next one is the pastor. The pastor. Pastors are shepherds. Pastors are shepherds. Their responsibility is to guard, or their responsibilities primarily, primarily are to guard and feed the sheep. The, as pastor, my responsibility is to protect you. Protect you from what? Protect you from false doctrine. Protect you from things that are not of God. Protect you from the slots, the attacks, the devices that the enemy uses. That's the responsibility of the pastor. The pastor's responsibility is to feed the sheep also, to feed you. What's the purpose of feeding you? To grow you. We can't stay babies all our life. Amen. You ever seen a 50-year-old baby walking around in diapers? You ever seen that? That's, that's, that's not normal, is it? If you see a 50-year-old walking around with a pacifier in their mouth and a tongue that looked like they just took it out of their mouth or, or a, a thumb that looks like they just removed it from their mouth, and talking about mama, 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 mama. You know something's wrong. It's too many babes in the body of Christ. Some of us have been saved a long time. Look at somebody and say, it's time to grow up. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God praise. And then the last one is teachers. Teachers are responsible for assisting the pastor in educating and growing the sheep. They're they may have a specific teaching area that they're anointed, that they're blessed, that they're, you know, they're gifted in to talk about this specific area. So the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, those are the administration gifts that are relegated by the Lord Jesus himself. He calls them. And then the, the final category are known as the operation gifts or the motivation gifts. The operation gifts or the motivation gifts and these are the ones that the Bible tells us the Father is responsible for. You can read about this in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. I am going to teach on that in more detail later, probably following uh, this shape series. But I can only touch on it today. If you, what are the operational gifts? And see, this is where I draw a little bit of a distinction in my explanation of how these gifts work. Remember when I, said, when I used, I, uh, I referred to the definition uh, that... Um, uh, Mr. Reese, how he defined the spiritual gifts, and he said they're given once a person uh, has been born again. And remember, I said, well, you know, I draw a little bit of a difference in, in that, particularly when it comes down to the operation gifts, particularly when it comes down to the operation gifts. Now, when we talk about the, uh, uh, the, the manifestation gifts, which are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, those are distributed by the Spirit as he wills, as he sees fit. So he'll give it to you for a moment in order to accomplish something, and then he takes it back. So you can't walk around 24-7 talking about you got words of wisdom all day long. You ain't got no words of wisdom from God all day long. That's not God. You speaking in tongues all day long. Shut up. That ain't God. Because those gifts come as the Spirit wills. When he has a purpose intent, when he wants to bless the body. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. When we talk about the next, the, the, the administration gifts, which are the ones that Jesus distributes. They don't necessarily come at once you're born again. You didn't get called to be a pastor. You just got saved. You don't even know anything yet. How you talk about you pastor? How you going to feed sheep and you don't even have any word in you? 
You don't have any growth. You don't have any experiences. You don't even have a relationship with him yet. You just came to him. You're not yet called to be a pastor. So I don't agree that they all come at the new birth. I believe they come at different times. Now, with respect to these, the operational gifts or the uh, motivation gifts, these gifts, I believe, are gifts that are embedded in us from birth. And they may come to life when we're born again. But I believe that they're embedded in us at birth. And these are gifts that drive you. You know, there are some things that just drive, that just drive you. There are some things that just move you and motivate you. There are some things that just stir something up on the inside of you, right? So let me briefly talk about these. The first in, in Romans chapter 12 is the prophecy gift, the gift of prophecy. Now, by the way, this is not the same. There, you know, you, you find prophecy here, you find a prophet in the administration gifts, and then you find the, 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 the prophecy over in the, the spiritual gift. The, all three of them are different. So this prophecy is not the, talking about the prophet. This prophecy is not talking about the spiritual gift of prophecy either. This is a, 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 a drive in you. Welcome back. Isn't that a powerful word? Don't miss tomorrow when we come back with part four of the message, Your Five Heartbeats. I need you to do me a favor, like it, and share it with your friends and family. I'm Laura Worcester, and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word, and therefore it is with the same measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again.